let's talk about becoming a trend following moron. And I'll give you the kind of thumbnail Reader's Digest version. There was a famous trader, let's call him Trader Joe. And he told me in some emails, he started emailing me, he said that he's never seen anyone with such an uncanny, uncanny ability to predict the markets. Now, in all fairness, it was 1999. I was just following. And this gentleman was more of a commodity trader and he wasn't a stock trader. And all of a sudden he sees a stock trader out there that's like showing stocks. And the next day, there was one at least I remember. I always talk about it because I forgot to take it. <laughs> I was so pissed off. That went up 56 points the next day. So he was just amazed. And he thought I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And reality was I was just following along. But I had the wherewithal to actually follow along because the market was going up. So our emails talk, turned to these really long phone calls. And uh, that was back when I had landlines. And, and, the, and long distance was still expensive. I remember spending hundreds of dollars on our phone calls. It was crazy. And then we ended up meeting in New York. And we stayed in, to, stayed in this restaurant for many, many hours into the wee hours of the morning. And it was really a pinch me type of moment. And he's, a, if you've been around for a while in the trading world, you should know who he is, if I mention his name, which I'm not, because I don't want to get in trouble. But anyway, it, at one point in time, I think he went to the bathroom, this significant other, other leaned over and says, you know, he's not like this with everyone. In fact, she's never seen him like that. And he's he's truly impressed with you. And I'm like, wow, it was, you know, it was a very pitch me type of moment. And then when he got back, he he talked about several million dollars of seed money. He wanted to do something with me and start a hedge fund or whatever. And I was pretty excited about that, especially because it was 30 years ago or 20 something years ago, 25 years ago at least. And I was still, you know, I was still a young guy in the trading world, and I was pretty exciting to uh, be able to just kind of walk in early in my career and then all of a sudden have a hedge fund handed to me. I was helping to run a hedge fund at the time, but I was just doing technical analysis on the bond market at that time. And uh, I wasn't like uh, running a hedge fund or whatever. But anyway, and in subsequent email exchanges after we, we met in New York, he mentioned that he was heavily long a market and I'm sorry, heavily short a market. This should say short right here. And the market was still going up. And so I thought I was being kind of cute. And I just, I'd send him emails with, with big blue arrows pointing the market going up, and though he was short. And and I thought it'd be kind of funny or whatever, but, but evidently it, it irked him. And I continued to, so I quit doing that, but I continued to draw my big blue arrows in the column. And by the way, the, the, to those of you who don't know me, way back, way, 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 way back in the trading markets days, we were one of the first two websites out there. I'm dating myself here. It was uh, Trading Markets and Market Watch, and there might have been a third, Street.com. I remember Market Watch went public, and they were worth a billion dollars. No, I forget how many billion they were worth, but based on our calculations, uh, our, our little website should have been worth about 100 million which I did have some options in it, which would have been pretty nice. I think I had 100,000 options. I still have them. Um, I use them to wallpaper my bathroom. <laughs> I'm half kidding. Anyway, they're worthless. But anyway, back way back in the day, the Blue Arrow, that's what I was going with that. Uh, I had a paint program that defaulted to blue. And so I just drew these big blue arrows in the chart. So I became known as the guy who drew the big blue arrows. And Trader Joe told me where to stick those arrows. <laughs> And now the emails from Trader Joe ceased, but immediately I began to get some emails that were best be described as could best be described as nasty grams. And the last one of the exchange was you're nothing but a trend following moron and will die penniless. Penny, penniless. Can't even say it. Maybe I'll die without grammar too. <laughs> So this was an anonymous email, but I'm 99% sure it was him. And so I called him by name and said, look, I'm not trying to be a smart ass here or anything. I just call it like I see him. These markets are going up and I'm still going to draw my arrows because I guess I'm nothing but a trend following moron. And that immediately stopped the email. So that told me that it was him. Now, I was devastated, and 
I would say borderline depressed or somewhat depressed about this for quite some time. And I remember this whole thing was such a pinch me moment. I remember when we lived out in the country and uh, like when the first email came in and my wife starts coming down the driveway, which was a tenth of a mile long, I'm like running out to meet her. She's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? It's like, he knows who I am and blah, blah, blah. And this is somebody I was just idolized. And, you know, don't meet your mentors <laughs> is what I would tell you. Turns out he was a dick. Anyway, so I was devastated and I was depressed for quite a while. And I kind of replayed that in my head and I let that kind of kind of eat away at me. And and now I've learned if somebody gives me some shit, especially from this particular thing, spin that into gold, you know, <laughs> and that's what I did. But at the time, I was pretty low because I was just deflated. It's like I, he had built me up for all this greatness and I was going to run this hedge fund and all this great things could happen. And then all of a sudden he turned nasty on me uh, because he was shorting a market that was going up and I was drawing big blue arrows pointing out to everybody that this market is still going up. But anyway, I really began to question myself and it was, a, it was a, I don't want to go too deep and say it was that dark. I mean, cause I had other stuff going on that was, was good in my life. You know, family was good and, and uh, uh, trading markets was good and trading in general was good, but I was pretty low based on this, truth be told. And I began to question myself, am I just a trend falling moron and, and will that cause me to die penniless? And with that in the back of my mind, I began noticing that I lost money when I tried to outsmart a market, like get in the market and be up a few points or whatever the case may be, and I take the money off or I try to anticipate a signal. And I noticed, noticed that I lost money when I did that. Anytime I tried to outsmart a market, I'd miss a huge move that would come afterwards. And anyway, but when I just followed along like a good little trend following moron, I tended to do okay. And then I began to think, well, maybe I am a trend following moron. And I began to identify as a trend following moron. Somebody was, somebody, this friend of mine's wife buys, Buys me a crazy T-shirt every year. And, uh, <laughs> this is one I guess is not politically correct. I can't really describe it, but uh, one that she was supposed to buy me last year was uh, uh, I identify as a conspiracy theorist. My pronouns are I told you so. Uh, maybe I'd wear that shirt. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I began publicly identified as a TFM, and then T-shirts and buttons would soon follow. I should have dug some out before the presentation. Anyway, what's uh, to my surprise, a lot of my clients begin to identify as fellow TFMs. I get t emails quite often that say fellow TFM here when somebody introduces themselves. And it just makes me proud that people would also identify as TFMs. Now, what does it mean to be a trend following moron? Well, you don't confuse the issue with facts, especially the situation in Nigeria. And that was, to those who don't know, I know it's kind of like Dave's greatest hits tonight, but. I was speaking at Traders Expo many years ago, and I was showing a bunch of oil stocks, energy stocks, and I was explaining that I was bearish on them, and I showed some live setups, and I showed some setups for my portfolio or whatever, or from the trading service or both. I forget exactly, but I was bearish, and I had live setups in my slides that I put in the day before. And uh, out of the blue, this person just blurted out, sounded like Henry Kissinger. What about the situation in Nigeria? I'm like, uh, what about the situation in Nigeria? And I was just being uh, rhetorical, and, uh, if that's a word. And he began to explain to me the situation in Nigeria. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, it, I was like, I really didn't want to know because I ignore all news. Now, I ignore all news. Uh, this is from Trading Full Circle. And I often say this, but I get questions about earnings. What do you do about earnings? I ignore all news, okay? Do I occasionally get burnt? Yeah, but a lot of times, especially on these positions that I'm in for months and even years, there were a lot of times where I'll make a lot of money when the news is favorable or seen as favorable. Now, this is a little dated slide, and I probably should do a, an updated one. But these were some of the things that happened. And I, I borrowed this idea from Greg Morris in Trading with the Trend, which is a great book, by the way. I suggest you get it. 
he showed a chart and he put a bunch of news events in it and the exercise is to go into the chart and figure out where these events occurred and you can't really tell where they occurred you know maybe in the slide back here some of these really bad things happened okay and then but then look what the market did it came right back so why did it come right back and so longer term news is noise and then you could see after that going into the next year all these different things happened uh the a, a gorilla got killed a gorilla got shot pokemon came and pokemon went and there was a coup in turkey zika virus brexit and north korea lost launched a rocket into space there was someone who had problems with their private email servers and should not have had private email servers and so on and so forth Sounds like the chapter in Livermore's reminiscence when he worked for a big trader and it turned out he was against him and trying to tie his trading up in knots. Yeah, a lot of good, uh, a lot of good stories from that. As you know, uh, Keith, I did a whole series on that. That it's one of you know, you know I me. Mean? I start a series and it takes forever to finish it. But yeah, there's a lot of great stories in reminiscence of a stock operator. Now, what is is don't do not try to add rhyme or reason. The moment you try to connect the dots is the moment you're dead. As I often say, and, and this is gonna get a lot of this stuff is gonna get fleshed out over time. But as I often say, the themes, for instance, make a lot of sense. Okay. But trying to trade purely off of themes without the chart doesn't work and and a lot of times your technical analysis or all of the time technical analysis will find themes like when academy sports came up as a setup during the pandemic i didn't connect the dots there but people were sick of staying home and they wanted to buy some sporting equipment and get outside now that's a theme, but I found the stock before the theme was revealed, okay? So I would say if I had to bet 99 out of 100 themes, as I've said before, do not work. Now the TFM knows that the only way to make money is to capture a trend. So the only way to profit from any trade is to capture a trend. I don't care what methodology you're using, counter trend or wave counting or Fibonacci, you better catch a trend, otherwise you're not gonna make any money. So from A to B is a trend. If you buy at A and sell at B, you caught a trend. Your profit obviously is B minus A. Now, complex formulas and arcane methods may eventually work, but when they do, something far more simpler would also have worked. And as I've said a million times, I've been in a lot of presentations where people will have 100 buy and sell signals on a chart, and you just look at something simple like Landry Light, and it doesn't have to be my indicator, it could be anybody's indicator, whatever, or just a big blue arrow, would have kept you in that entire trend and not getting in and out 100 different times. Anyway, you can see this is one we're long now, just a simple first pullback in an IPO, one of my favorite patterns. This stock came public, sold off a little bit, not too much excitement. Then it began to take off. Now, because it's over $30 a share, I didn't do a buy at B because that's the buy at B rule. We tend to like the buy at B for stocks that are a little bit lower priced. Anyway, you can see the entry was there. It didn't do a whole lot at first, but then it eventually took off and it went, it went, a, it went a long, long, long ways. And that's just a really simple pattern. No indicators or anything were used when I picked that pattern out. Now, Landry Light pullbacks, this is STXS, which triggered recently. Notice the Landry Light was about 30 or so, 30 bars of Landry Light. And then it pulls back to the moving average. The Landry Light goes to zero. And as I preach, an indicator doesn't indicate anything it simply illustrates. So you always wanna look at the chart and see if the chart confirms. So anyway, the entry was there and so far so good, knock on wood. We haven't hit the IPT yet, but hopefully we will. Now, as far as 
trying to outsmart the market, you you follow along and you accept it. You don't try to get cute and get in and out. And I thought about this one last minute because in my YouTube for Your Daily Five, which is on my website, DaveLearner.com, if you go there, today's April 4th, if you go there, you can see it. And uh, you can see the comments in the YouTube. And somebody said, well, he follows this guru guy. And not to take anything away from this guy, because I don't know his system. It, allegedly, he's he's a pretty famous guy and he's done really well for himself. But this particular gentleman says he gets out to market when there's consolidations. Well, I guess he was right today. But if you try to get out and be cute every time there's a consolidation, or as I often say, dead money, and this is one of the things I told this gentleman because he was out of the market. It's like, well, if you got out every time, it's like, when do you get back in when it takes off again? And here's this position we were just talking about, the KNF. And many, many times there were dead money, and this thing's almost up 100% now. So you have to sometimes just follow along like a trend following moron. 